Joy of Julian on the brown note and a review of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Um, I'm obviously a few weeks away, so I've missed some films that I've seen a little while ago. But Tim Burton's one of the most interesting auteurs of the last 40 years in film. He's a really interesting filmography and, of course, a very indicative style. Um, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, a much loved and very idiosyncratic children's film, uh, really got going with Beetlejuice in 1988, which was a, a very unusual comic horror tale that has impacted popular culture and hasn't really died away, even though it's on the back burner. But then he had some really an interesting run. I mean, Batman was an, a game-changing film. Edward Scissorhands, Batman Returns, I think is not possibly one of the most influential uh, comic book superhero films ever, given the darkness of it compared to the first Batman films. And Ed Wood as well was a very well-received film. It kind of went backwards and forwards from there. Mars Attacks has its fans and its detractors. Sleepy Hollow is very underappreciated. It's a superb film. No one, no one loves Planet of the Apes. And it's sort of been backwards and forwards a lot. So this is being definitely promoted as a return to form. But I think even I think it's more of a, a dual return to form that in that the film has been well loved critically and at the box office rather than one way round or the other and it's a sequel to Beetlejuice and brings back the two main players Michael Keaton and Winona Ryder both veterans that have now built up an enormous amount of kudos um, it's an Adams Family style sort of ghosty supernatural tale where Michael Keaton's Beetlejuice is a demon and he can be summoned by saying Beetlejuice, 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 which I've just done, and I've just summoned him, and he's over there. Um, and it follows on from the first film with Winona Ryder, who was the teen actress of her era for films like Heathers and so on. Though not always a great actor herself, I think she's gotten better over the years, as so many do. Um, they go back to the old house, and this time the replacement for Winona Ryder is expertly chosen as its girl Jenny Ortega, who fits in very well with Winona Ryder as well. Um, and basically the Michael Keaton Beetlejuice character starts reappearing in her life, and there's some other things that go on. With regards to a boyfriend, which initially I thought was the weakest plot point and ends up being the strongest plot point, in the middle of the film, it's revealed what's really happening. And um, I, at that point, I thought, I really like everything, but it's going to be a journey to get to the end because it's not a short film. It's, well, no, it's not two hours. I thought it was over two hours. It's just under. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. It's got some good people. Um, Monica Bellucci as Michael Keaton's ex-wife in the underworld so we have the um, Winona Ryder haunted house that she lives in or goes back to as a family home once her father dies in a very funny scene from um, Margaret O'Hara who's the mum I can't remember I think it's Margaret O'Hara who plays her mum who's this just unbelievably demanding narcissistic self-obsessed person Catherine O'Hara sorry Catherine O'Hara, um, who's the stepmom of the Winona the Rider character, and very good value and a lot of fun here. Um, Monica Bellucci is in the underworld realm. Uh, she is the very punitive ex-wife of Beetlejuice, who we go back in time and find out had some sort of medieval stuff going on. And there's some great people in there. There's Justin Theroux, William Dafoe um, turn up as well. Danny DeVito gets a one-shot performance. And everyone's just really on board. And the fact that it's done so well at the box office, really well, considering um, the budget and the fact that it could have easily died a million Marvel deaths, uh, is guaranteed that they're going to get the Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice title out in the future. And 
It brings a lot of goodwill for it. It's um, Burton's films are always very idiosyncratically shot. I think the excrement director Wes Anderson, whose films I detest, really copied Tim Burton wholesale in the kookiness. But whereas Tim Burton actually filled out that kookiness with a lot of style and substance. Wes Anderson just doesn't. He just places a camera in a weird angle and dresses up his characters slightly odd and thinks that's a film. Um, the grossness and extremeness of a lot of the comedy and gore exceeds what you would expect it to be. For a positive, there's a great side character to Michael Keaton's character called Bob who exists in the underworld. Keaton is fantastic. Everyone is complaining that he isn't on screen much, which is very true. Um, I did think that once the Winona family dynamic, which revolves around her getting married to an insanely boring man on Halloween, um, wasn't going to pad the movie out, but Jenny and Jenny Ortega's flirtations with a young local boy were going to be very, very boring. It's actually the flip. Uh, there's a great twist in the middle, which does completely reframe everything and make it easily power on through. And the effects are uh, like the visuals and the effects are great, especially because they don't rely on CGI throughout. They mix it up with a lot of practical effects as well. And I do remember the music. Who did the music? Danny Elfman. Okay, so he's like one of the go to guys in Hollywood. Uh, anyway for music but overall i thought it was a really entertaining film i don't know why it's, it's quite an online community of hate for this film i really don't get it it's extremely likable and i you know after winona's sort of gone through some dark times and hasn't always been a great actor it's great to see these people coming back and you can't get a more loved actor these days than michael keaton so setting him up for a third film where he might actually be the lead character instead of somebody that that appears every now and again but he is terrific when he's on screen and it's a very interesting character um so i thought it was great i thought i really enjoyed it so i'm going to give beetlejuice beetlejuice an eight out of ten i thought perfect entertainment uh even though it kind of masquerades as a kid's film i'm not sure everything you see on screen is that suitable for children